Just the other day, I was scrolling through Orange Reddit, and I came across this. Local Send, an open source airdrop alternative. Now at this stage, I don't exist within the Apple ecosystem, but I've always thought the idea of airdrop sounded like a super convenient and really streamlined function. So I thought, hey, let's go and try this thing out. If it's a waste of time, it's a waste of time. But to my surprise, this works really, really well. And I've had basically no issues with it. Now, I'm going to be going between my Android phone and my Linux desktop. We have Android on the left, Linux on the right. This is not a limitation of the application. It's just what I have in front of me. I'll show you all of the other clients a bit later. So, when you open up the application, you'll be presented with an ID. In this case, we have Pretty Strawberry 50 on the phone and Neat Avocado 55 on the desktop. This is a mostly randomly assigned name. There's like a list of acceptable terms, but for all intents and purposes, it is a randomly assigned name, at least by default. This name can be changed. If we go into the settings and scroll down to where it says alias, this can be something like Arch Desktop, for example, if I want to make it clear that this is my desktop. Now, when you do this, you will have to restart the internal server. And when we go back, now the name is here. If I go to send over on my phone and I refresh, now it shows up. And because this is a Flutter application, the UI between desktop and mobile is basically identical. If I go to settings on my phone and scroll down to alias, if we then change this to, I don't know, uh, phone, for example, I restart the internal server. If we go to send over here, it's still going to show the old name. But if we do a refresh, now it shows up. Now, unlike AirDrop, there is one pretty big caveat. You do need to make sure both devices are on the same network. So if you're out and about, it's a little bit inconvenient to use. Obviously, the fact that it's this weird application that most people don't have installed, but also the whole network thing. So you'd have to set up like a local hotspot and have both devices connect to it. But if you're doing this at home, for example, it works perfectly fine. So how do we actually use this? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to send an image from my desktop over to my phone. And on the phone, it doesn't matter which tab we're on, as long as the app is open. We can be on receive, send, or settings, as long as this is here. On the desktop, we need to make sure we go over to the send tab. If we click on file, this is going to open up whatever file browser makes sense for your specific OS. In this case, we have the GTK file picker because Linux. I'm going to go into my pictures and send this picture of Giga Chad Richard Stallman. Now, we don't just have to send a single image. If I click add again, it brings up this pop-up letting me select what I want to send. I'm going to send more files. If we go into, say, my MPV screenshots folder, and let's just select some random screenshots, say, all of these ones here. If I click open, all of those are going to be added. So now we are ready to send. If I want to send, I just click on the device, and over on that side, it's going to give me a pop-up. It will tell me how many files are being sent, and I can choose to accept or decline it. In this case, I'm going to accept it. It's going to start the download, and we're all done. And on both sides, it shows you the files sending and receiving. And over on my gallery, all seven of these images are here, even though one of them simply shouldn't exist. And now sending from my phone to my desktop works basically the exact same way. With the addition of some extra filters here, just to make it a bit easier to deal with the Android file manager. So you want to send like specifically an APK, you want to send media, things like that. I'm just going to select file and let's just add some random file. Say this thumbnail picture right here. There we go. I click the Arch desktop. We get the notification. I click accept. The image is now sent. If instead, the other party were to decline the send, a notification will be sent to the sender's device. The recipient has rejected the request. If we close this, we can then go and select another device. Now this may have been obvious by the fact that you have to be on the same network, but when you are sending this data, when you're trying to find devices that are nearby, all of this is being done on your local network. There are no third-party servers, the internet isn't involved, it's all being done locally. That doesn't mean the data is sent without any form of encryption though. When you are sending this data, it is encrypted with HTTPS with TLS certs generated on the fly. Does this mean that you should be sending the nuclear launch codes over some random app you found on GitHub? 
No. Every application can have vulnerabilities. But for what regular people are doing, sending some funny images back and forth, sending a video from one device to another, it is perfectly fine. Especially so if you're only doing it at your home amongst your own devices. Now, I already showed you the reload button, but there are these two other buttons as well. Enter address and send mode. I'm going to do the first one from my phone just to make this a little bit easier. So, enter address lets you enter the IP address of the device you want to send to, either the final numbers or the full IP address. I'm doing this from my phone because I know what the IP address of my desktop is. If we enter 55 here, now it does the exact same send prompt we saw before. This is something that you probably won't ever find yourself actually using, but on the off chance you need to send directly to the IP address and the discovery isn't working the way it normally should be, that is nice to have there. As for the other button, that is send mode. Now by default, it is set to single recipient. So you send the file to a single device. Then we have multiple recipients. So you can select multiple devices and it will send the file to all of them. Last one is share via link. This starts up a local server on your device and then on your other device, you can then enter this address and go directly to that interface. It's going to wait for a response. Over here, we have to go and actually select yes, accept it. It will then make the connection and then we can go and select the file, download it. And it works the exact same way as before. This is nice if you don't have the application installed on one of your devices, but it's still a little bit inconvenient. The other option we have here is make a QR code. So you can go and scan this QR code on another device. They don't need to install any application and it'll bring them directly to this interface. Now, one thing you may have noticed is this encryption toggle that is not toggled. Now, when we're doing our regular sends, if we go into settings, go down to advanced settings, encryption is enabled. But when we're doing share via link, it is not enabled. And there is a good reason for this. Let's click on encryption. Let's grab the link and use a browser that I don't normally use. Let's go and dump this in here. It's going to say your connection is not private which is what normally shows up if you try to use HTTPS with a broken TLS cert. But the TLS cert is perfectly fine. If we go back to the application, it says exactly what's wrong. Local send uses a self-signed certificate. You need to accept it in the browser. Now, browsers for a very long time, rightfully by default, do not accept self-signed certs because Anybody could sign their own certs, and certs would be basically meaningless. You need to have some form of governing body to make sure the certs actually make sense. So in this case, what we can do is click Advanced and click Proceed. It's still going to say it's not secure, but that's just because the browser has no idea what to do with a self-signed cert. But once we are here, everything is going to work fine. If I click on Accept, now it's going to make the connection, we can send the image, and we're good to go. This isn't a problem within the application because the app knows that it's going to be using a self-signed cert and it knows that the cert is coming from itself. So everything is all good. It's just a slight inconvenience of the share via link method. But using the share via link method is just naturally going to be inconvenient. This is just an extra inconvenience on top of the inconvenience. Now at the start when I was saying I did this between Linux and Android because that's what I had in front of me, I absolutely meant that. If we go over to the GitHub, we have all of the distribution channels. We have Windows on WinGet, Scoop, Chocolatey, MSIX Installer, a portable zip. We have macOS on the App Store, Homebrew, DMG Installer. We have Linux, FlatHub, AUR, NixOS, Tar, Deb, App Image. We have Android, Play Store, F Droid, APK. We have iOS, App Store. We have FireOS, Amazon. There's not many options in these ones, but everything else has a ton of different options. In this case, I'm using the Play Store Android application and I'm using the app image on Linux. The reason I'm using the app image and not the Flatpak, I will recommend not using the Flatpak actually. The Flatpak has some kind of busted permissions, so you can only download and send files from your downloads directory. There is a file portal that exists specifically to deal with this problem of letting an application 
access certain places on your file system, but the Flatpak doesn't use it, so it's basically busted. If you want to use the Flatpak and it not be super inconvenient, basically you have to just delete the file system sandboxing and then it will work properly. Now this developer is kind of insane because usually a dev will pick like one or two distribution channels and then anything else just let other people maintain it. In this case, the main developer, with the exception of Chocolatey, NixOS, and the AUR, is listed as one of the maintainers. So this guy right here, this is the maintainer. Pretty much everything he is directly involved with. Now, I know what somebody is going to say. This is a useless application because, I don't know, I can do the same thing with netcat. I can do this with an SSH connection. I can use rsync for a really hyper lightweight solution. And you are absolutely right. And there are plenty of other tools that achieve a fairly similar goal. For example, we have things like share via HTTP, QR serve, pair drop, Linux Mint's Warpinator. All of these great tools as well and I'm sure they have their users. However, local send works really well, and I think it is also a really good application that might be worth using. Plus, I feel like it has a much cleaner interface than a couple of these other applications. For example, especially compared to share via HTTP. Like, it functions, and if you just don't care about any interface whatsoever, you just want it to work, this will work, but like, look, this is really well designed, and I gotta give it props for that. And if you care about other tools, there is a bunch of other tools listed in the Hacker News thread, because this is not like a new concept. There is a bunch of things that do this, and a bunch of people have tried to do similar things over the years. Like, even KDE Connect, in many ways, does much of the same function. I just have never had KDE Connect work properly, and local send. Uh, for the time I've been using it, has only worked properly. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you tried out local send before? Maybe you use one of these other tools. Maybe you like to have cables connected to everything and just send it like that. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become a one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I think this tool is pretty neat.